Uh, a very good evening to all our distinguished panelists and students and parents from India. A warm welcome to all of you. I'm Vaishnavi Thakur, a master's student in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Information Systems at the University of Tokyo. Today, I'm uh, the facilitator for this webinar on studying and working in Japan. I'm also joined by uh, Ms. Akshi Verma, who will be assisting me throughout this uh, webinar as a sub facilitator. Uh, so before we begin, I request all the panelists to turn off your audio and video when not presenting. And additionally, we share the university details in the chat box after your presentation. And I encourage all the attendees to post your questions in the Q&A portal so that we can address them during the dedicated Q&A session. Uh, let's start the webinar now, uh, giving a brief introduction to Japan. Japan, the land of rising sun, holds an immense potential for students and professionals. It's the world's third largest economy and has the highest employment rate among developed G7 nations. But surprisingly, many students still uh, choose Western countries for their higher education. This is mainly due to a lack of awareness about the incredible opportunities and quality of life that Japan offers. So today, our aim is to bridge that gap and, uh, and dispel any misconceptions regarding the Japanese education, including the language barriers, the tuition fees, living expenses, and job prospects. So in order to achieve this goal, the University of Tokyo India office is organizing these informative sessions and uh, various experts from various universities across Japan will provide valuable insights and guidance on various programs offered in the institutions. So each university will have a dedicated presentation followed by a Q&A session to address any queries you may have. So without any further delay, uh, let's start the webinar and let me uh, allow to introduce our uh, Ms. Sakshi Roy, the Assistant Manager of the University of Tokyo India office. I would like to request her to, uh, pre to give a brief overview of the University of Tokyo India office. Thank you so much for the introduction, Ms. Sakshi. Let me uh, share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Uh, yes. So uh, namaste, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, everyone. Um, welcome to this webinar, Study and Work in Japan, session four of this webinar series 2023. So my name is Sakshi Roy, uh, and this program is hosted by the University of Tokyo India office and brought to you by MIXED, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology in Japan. So first of all, uh, before giving you a brief information about this project and our office, I would like to thank all of you. It's a great pleasure for us that you have participated in our webinars. Thank you for supporting our webinars uh, and uh, attend our webinars. So I would like to thank all our expert panel uh, panel members from prestigious Japanese universities for contributing in the, into this webinar series. So uh, let me start with a brief introduction about our office. So we are the part of Surrey in Japan Global Network Project in Southwest Asia by MEXT, and we provide information on Japanese universities, not only the University of Tokyo, but uh, we can provide information to all of the Japanese universities as our office is uh, funded by Japanese government to promote study in Japan. And uh, we also organize education fairs and seminars throughout India to spread uh, awareness about higher education opportunities in Japan. All right, so about the webinar today, uh, we are conducting a session four of this study and work in Japan webinar series. And all these webinars is basically designed to introduce you to some of the best Japanese universities. And uh, we'll be discussing the various program offerings and opportunities to study and work in Japan in our online session. So uh, you'll get to know about courses offered in English, scholarship opportunities, and moreover, uh, you have a chance uh, to ask your queries directly to the university uh, representatives. All right, so talking about the number of higher education institutions in Japan, there has been approximately 700 plus universities as well as, as, well as specialized vocational institutions in Japan. And I must tell you uh, that studying abroad in Japan means further your study in a well-rounded education system, uh, you'll experience a unique new culture and you have a chance to gain more international perspective. So no doubt um, you'll uh, 
learn from the very best in the world and work in some of the most modern labs with great facilities and uh, you know you can also learn japanese easily if you live in japan and also some of the japanese universities offering uh, preparatory japanese language courses for international students all right so now uh, i would like to introduce this qr code for information about study in japan so by scanning this qr code uh, you'll get the whole information about the study in japan like if you're interested in to know about uh, the de the degree programs offered in english or maybe you're interested in short term programs or transfer programs or scholarship opportunities so just uh, scan this qr code and go to the website and you can just uh, check out the courses uh, that are there uh, offered by japanese universities and you can also uh, save the link for your future reference and i'll i'll also share the uh, link of this qr code in the chat box for your reference so for further information please feel free to contact us at this mail address we would be very happy to assist you you can take a picture of this contact address or i'll also share the details in the chat box and uh, we are also very active on social media so you can follow our social media pages to get updates regarding study and work in japan webinars and related information all right so this is the username of our youtube channel so lots of student asking about the recordings of our webinar so to check the recordings of our webinar uh, please subscribe to our youtube channel and it would be very grateful if you can support us by liking and sharing our youtube videos So thank you very much for listening to me. Please stay tuned till the end of the session, and I am sure uh, this webinar will be profitable, and the next few hours will be fruitful to every one of you. Thank you so much for paying attention. Please enjoy today's session. Thank you, Sachi Sun, for providing your valuable information about the webinars and also for introducing it to the students. I'm sure it's very valuable for the students. and now let us delve into the core of the webinar and commence with the university presentations uh, as outlined in our agenda uh, can i have the agenda slide uh, so right now we have the university of tokyo as our first presenter a uh, university of tokyo is established in 1877 often referred as todai is considered as the most selective and prestigious university in japan it has a broad history of producing exceptional alumni including 17 prime ministers 17 nobel prize laureates five astronauts and field medalists the university's reputation extends globally as it collaborates with other leading institutions to advance human knowledge so uh, today we are fortunate to have professor richard shepherson a distinguished faculty member who will provide us with a comprehensive overview of the peak program at the university of tokyo You can start your presentation, Professor. So let's get the slides going here. Yep. Okay. Uh, so my name is Rich Shepherson, and I'm going to be introducing uh, the programs in English. Come up up to the Peak Program. I'm a professor within this program at the University of Tokyo. Uh, can I have the next slide there? Okay. So let's just start off before we get into Peak. Um, why? might you want to study at the University of Tokyo? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the University of Tokyo was founded as, as, as you learned just a moment ago in 1877 as the first uh, of the national universities uh, in Japan. And um, it's been through various name changes, um, you know, became the Imperial University, the Tokyo Imperial University, and then went back to the University of Tokyo a little, a little later on. um but basically it's been um the first and the in the foremost of the of the national universities within the the Japanese university system uh currently has uh quite a large number of students as you can see nearly 30,000 um i think that that's probably going to be more graduate students than undergraduate but uh, we have a huge undergraduate base we take in something like 3,000 undergraduates or so per year and we have about 11,000 academic and administrative staff Uh, next slide. Um, now, students actually come from abroad for exchange at our university as well, and we send some of our students abroad. We have um, a memorandum of understanding and, and uh, cooperative relationships with 
um, universities all over the world, all the top universities, uh, Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, uh, Berkeley, Stanford, and so forth. And so this shows you some of the you know numbers of students going abroad every every year, I believe, uh, as well as the number of students coming in every year. Um, I think this is this year, so the numbers are probably regrowing uh, post COVID. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the university has been uh, well. It's in several of the different world universities. Consideration. I think the most important one right now is supposed to be something like a uh, job placement post graduation. Uh, in any case, we're uh, number 23 in the world on that list uh, as of this year. Uh, next slide, please. And relative to the other uh, of the top universities in the world, we're very, very cheap. Um, Part of the reason for this is that if you look at uh, most of the really uh, the universities that people want to go to in the world, places like Harvard, for example, uh, they have a sort of a sliding scale uh, tuition system in which they they generally try to find uh, um, you know breaks for American citizens to lower the cost there, but then they'll push the full price out to international students and and others to make the the cost of the education very very expensive. In the University of Tokyo, we don't do that. We have uh, sort of a mandated uh, tuition that's across the board where you either pay the tuition or you get a scholarship. And that's very, very cheap uh, relative to all the other universities. And so it's about 5,000 USD per year. Next uh, slide, please. Um, now I'm a biologist. Um, you know, I love biology and I love being in a university that has a lot of great biological research. And it, it's uh, always a wonderful thing to know that there are so many Nobel Prize winners at the University of Tokyo. And so, uh, including at my campus, the Komaba campus. And so, uh, you know, students coming uh, to join our university can see lectures by you know, some of the world's top minds. Uh, this is just a list of some of the Nobel Prize winners that we've had. Next slide, please. Um, for me uh, personally, the one of the reasons that I love the University of Tokyo is its academic reputation. That's really built on its research, of course. And in terms of academic reputation, uh, we're considered the seventh uh, top university in the world, uh, according to the QS World Ranking System as well. And uh, so in very good company there with places like Harvard, Cambridge, Oxford, uh, Stanford, and so forth. Next slide. Okay, so that's the University of Tokyo uh, in a nutshell. Um, what about peak? So let's go to the next slide, please. So peak stands for programs in English at Komaba. If we could have the next slide. And what PEAK is, you know, the, the University of Tokyo, most of the curriculum for the undergraduate degree, most of the curriculum is, is taught in Japanese. And so back in 2012, PEAK was launched as a full four-year curriculum that's entirely in English. And that curriculum uh, basically is composed of two major parts, an international program on environmental sciences and an international program on Japan and East Asia. And this generally covers all of the natural sciences plus humanities and social sciences that you might wish to know. Uh, because this program is taught entirely in English, you do not need any Japanese language knowledge in order to join PEAK. Um, the only caveat there is that we do require our students to take some Japanese while they're in the university. I mean, after all, if you're going to come all the way to Japan to do your university, you should probably learn the language at least a little bit. <laughs> so that's our philosophy there. Uh, next slide, please. So our structure is a little different from some of the other uh, universities in Japan in terms of how the undergraduate um, curriculum is organized. So the first two years is considered the liberal arts curriculum. It's a general curriculum that differs a little bit based on whether you're a sciences student or a humanities versus social science student. And so uh, within those first two years, you take very general classes, the basic courses, as well as some mandatory Japanese language. And then um, you specialize in years three and four. Within environmental sciences, you see some of the sort of foci that we have in there, 
but basically, you know, you're, you're, you can learn everything from the hard sciences like physics uh, and chemistry onto the biological sciences, including ecology and evolution uh, and molecular biology uh, onto economics and policy. On the Japan and East Asia side, we have our humanities and social sciences. And so that's where we uh, have detailed courses in history and economics and international relations and so forth. Uh, next slide, please. So this shows you uh, some of the living costs. Uh, some people who think about coming to uh, Japan or to Tokyo in particular uh, think that there's high living costs. From my perspective, personally, I don't view living costs as particularly high. I've lived in parts of the world with much, much higher living costs than this. Uh, basically, a part, you know, our, we have a one-time admission fee. Our tuition fees are low, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, the accommodation that you see here, USD 750 per month, and then typical living expense of 725 per month. I, I think this is kind of typical, but you can get quite a bit cheaper. I know, honestly, some of my students uh, pay half of what you see here for their accommodation for their own place. So uh, uh, it is quite a reasonable place to live. Um, and I don't think you have to be worried so much about, about these sorts of expenses. Uh, next slide. In terms of scholarships, um, so we give a number of scholarships per year. So within PEAK, we actually, uh, we admit basically 30 students per year. So we're a very highly selective program. And we've generally tried to set it up so that about half of them get scholarships. Uh, the scholarships, the, so we have a University of Tokyo scholarship. There's about 10 students given that per year. That covers their admission fee, their tuition fees, and then a stipend, as you can see here, which is about 1100 uh, USD. Uh, per month. Um, there is a, a Japanese government next scholarship. We're currently negotiating that, but we, we generally get that. And it's very similar to the Utokyo scholarship, except with a round trip airline ticket uh, thrown in. And then there are sometimes some country specific scholarships. Uh, we mentioned the Singaporean and Malaysian ones here. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so how do you apply to PEAK? Um, we have a rather unique process, I think. The next slide. So as you can see here, we have a, a two-stage uh, process. So the first stage, um, we take an online uh, application, and that's the document screening stage. So you would submit an online application. And then on the basis of your online application, we would choose a number of those students for then uh, interviews in the second stage. Uh, if you're applying for the environmental sciences, then in addition to the interview, there would be an online math exam. Uh, the University of Tokyo prides itself on being on one of the world's top math schools. And so we, we expect a high level of math on our in our science students. And then, um, you know, if you succeed in that, then you're offered places based on the results of stages one and two. Um, I don't have the current dates for the application period, but basically um, the application period will be about a one month period running from mid-November to mid-December uh, of this year. And students who would be applying then would be applying for enrollment in September of 2024. Next slide. Now, um, to be eligible for PEAK, uh, you have to also submit um, predicted or actual standardized or national test scores. Uh, I should say, um, so we generally prefer the international standardized uh, exams, for example, SAT, ACT, the international baccalaureate, if you're in an IB school, uh, A-levels or international A-levels and so forth. There are some national uh, qualifications that we do accept. Um, I don't remember the list off the top of my head, but we, um, you can uh, basically look online at our, old, uh, at our old application guidelines and take a look at the full list of what we accept. And um, if you have a question, then certainly uh, contact us uh, about it. Uh, next slide. In terms of the document screening, so we have an online application form. We require an essay. Uh, we require your official school transcripts. Uh, because you're probably going to be applying at a time when you're still in high school, we uh, expect a certificate of at least expected graduation, when that would be. Uh, official examination results for academic ability, which would be the standardized examinations that I mentioned. Official test scores for English proficiency if you are not an, uh, a native English speaker. 
uh, and uh, two evaluations, so letters of recommendation from high school teachers. Uh, next slide. Now, in terms of our graduates, we uh, our graduates are quite successful people. Uh, can I have the next slide? So what you see here is sort of a breakdown um, of where our graduates have gone from our very first class on to fairly recently. And you can see that about half of them go on to graduate school after graduating, and the other half uh, more or less go into employment with a small sliver uh, deciding to take a little time and, and think their future over, as I think uh, many young people want to do these days. Uh, you can see that within the graduate school uh, group, uh, our students go to graduate schools all around the world. And within the employment group, a lot of our students like to stay within Japan, but they, some of them go back to um, their home countries or other countries altogether. The ones who stay uh, in Japan have a tendency to work for uh, large corporations here, some big international conglomerates and so forth. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of the graduate institutions that some of them go on to, this is showing you a, a broad mix of some of the uh, universities that they'll go to. And you see, uh, you know, pretty, uh, you know, the world's, some of the world's top universities here, uh, going to Oxford, Cambridge, uh, Berkeley, Duke, uh, University of Michigan, and so forth. Uh, next slide. And in terms of their study subjects, as you know, we actually, although we have two major specializations, that actually covers quite a lot of, of interest in our students. So our environmental science students uh, for graduate school, they go on to this uh, very broad list, uh, including biomedical engineering, computer science, chemical and biochemical engineering, uh, economics, education, environmental sciences, policy or engineering, law, uh, mathematical sciences, public policy. And on the Japan and East Asia side, you can see they go to things like area studies, economics, gender studies, global governance, uh, information, well, IT sorts of uh, IT related majors, international relations, Japanese history, political science, philosophy, sociology, and so forth. Uh, next slide. The ones who choose to go into employment rather than graduate school, so they go into all sorts of companies, as you can see here. Uh, a lot of them choose business consulting and management, for example, environmental consulting firms. Uh, some of my former undergraduate students have gone on and worked for those sorts of firms. Others go on into uh, accounting and banking, uh, media, uh, leisure, sports, and tourism, and so forth. Uh, some of them also go into work for the government and public services and admin. Uh, next slide. And so uh, with that, uh, I'm happy to take questions. You can also uh, scan this uh, QR code to get more information from our website. Thank you, Professor, for mm -hmm. sharing such an enlightening and comprehensive presentation. Thank you. Oh. Oh, can we proceed with the Q&A session? Sure, sure. So let's see. It looks like some of the first few questions were actually general. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to, uh, you're done with the presentation, right? I felt yes. that I have interrupted in between. Okay. No, no, no. I, I'm done with the presentation. Okay. Um, but uh, I'm not sure initially. Some of the initial ones, yeah, um, some of the initial ones don't seem specific to the University of Tokyo. If I scroll uh, down a little bit, I see some that are. Um, uh, is it okay if I pick a few questions? Yeah, why don't you do that? That'll, that'll, yes, that'll, that'll I think help that me out a bit. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Uh, so uh, if a student doesn't get a scholarship in the PEAT program, can he still apply for the PEAT program on his own? Uh, do you think it is possible? Or all the international students usually end up with a scholarship? Well, no, half the students who come into PEAT are on scholarship. So the other half are, are not, or, well, uh, of the other half, you know, sometimes they, they can get scholarships from their own governments or, or organizations within their own countries. So that's also a possibility. But but just, uh, you know, we give out about, um, I guess last year it was about 17 or 18 total scholarships, I think. And so the rest of the students coming in would not have those. Right? Okay. Uh, thank you. you. What is a bad size, uh, Professor? So what, uh, how many students are present in a peak program? Well, so we accept uh, 30 students per year, 
And so the whole program, it's a four-year program. So we have, uh, you know, that gives you a rough size of 120. It's actually a bit more than that. I think it's more like 150 right now, but um, yeah. Okay, thank you. And if you move on to the next question, so is it mandatory to know Japanese language? No, it's not. No, uh, the, the program runs entirely in English. We don't expect mm -hmm. any Japanese knowledge, but we do require that you learn some Japanese as a part of the program. So that's done within the first two years. I, I think the minimum requirement is three semesters, so if I remember this correctly. Okay. So usually the students can take classes for the Japanese language and mm -hmm. they end up with certain level of proficiency by the time they complete two years of their undergraduate program. Well, we so we provide actually quite a lot of Japanese education if you want it. So if you wanted to become completely fluent, you can do that through us. We I think the right now it's maybe seven levels of of Japanese language education, but the minimum we require is three classes, and that's just to get like you know that basically is enough to learn how to live in Japan basically and get around and not have too many problems. You know, the people who really want to get fully fluent, a lot of times they're interested in, in potentially studying in Japan more and actually, you know, using a lot of written materials and so forth. And so we, we certainly encourage that, but it's not required. And on the, the environmental science side in particular, our science students have a tendency to really want to, you know, get working in science. Uh, they'll typically take uh, fewer of those classes than on the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the students enrolling, is there any CGPA cutoff? Is there any? Um, oh, the, the GPA cutoff, I don't remember off the top of my head if we have a GPA cutoff or not. I think that generally speaking, uh, because you know we, we try to be open to students all around the world uh, mm -hmm. and students in various countries will have, use different systems for this. So I'm not sure, I don't remember if we have an actual cutoff on that. I don't think we do. Um, there are some minimum uh, cutoffs for the standardized examinations, though. I don't remember what they are off the top of my head, but if you go to the, our, our last year's application guidelines, then you can see some of those. Thank you. And uh, it's not related to the peak program question, but we have a question from uh, asking about uh, postdoc opportunities in the university. So do you have any idea about oh, postdoc it? University. Well, yeah, uh, certainly we have, we do, um, you know, we're a big national university, a research university. And so postdoc opportunities, um, usually postdocs are advertised either within Japan on certain websites um, that are open to people who are living here, or there'll be some international sources for that. But uh, if you're really, really um, motivated and want to come to Japan on a postdoc, my recommendation would be to go to the uh, the next, uh, the JSPS website and to look at the uh, JSPS postdoc for foreign researchers as a possibility. It's competitive and very, um, you know, it's a, it's a very nice and competitive um, award. I actually got it myself after graduate school. Um, it pays well and it gives you two years of good research funding. Um, all you need to do is find a host and, and develop a good project. Oh, wow, that's wonderful, Bruno. Thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll take one last question. So the P students in the PEAT program, so they'll graduate only from the environmental science department. Uh, say, suppose a student is interested in business administration. So is there such department in the PEAT program? No, PEAT right now. Uh, so... Yeah, right now we don't have anything like that. We do have students both in environmental sciences and in Japan and East Asia who are interested in kind of finance, economics or finance. Those are different fields, obviously, but, they, but they're interested in that. And some of them actually do go into business by themselves or go on and do MBAs later on or, or things like that. But we do not have a major within peak like that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. There are so many questions, uh, sure. especially even I personally want to ask you about how the university helps in the placement and the job opportunities. So uh, if you find these questions in the uh, chat, in the Q&A portal, please try to answer them. I see. That's okay. Please. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. I'm sure students are highly motivated to join the university. And mm -hmm. if you have any further uh, details, I request all the students to check the website and also contact uh, details are shared in the chat box. So you may refer to them. Uh, thank you, Professor. Yeah, thank you. So now let's move on to the next university. Uh, can I have the agenda slide, please? I also request uh, Lida. Okay. Okay, so here is the agenda slide. 
Uh, the next university is the Tohoku University. Tohoku University is one of the Japan's top national universities and it is renowned for its contributions to scientific research and technological advancements. With a strong emphasis on interdisciplinary studies, Tohoku University has established itself as a leader in fields of material science, engineering and medicine. So the university also boasts an impressive alumni network and to provide more details about the university, we are joined by uh, Mr. Dimitro, the specially appointed associate professor, and Ms. Yumiko Watanabe, the coordinator of the FGL program and the specially appointed professor of the Global Learning Center. Uh, they'll provide us with a comprehensive presentation on the opportunities available at Tohoku University for the students in India. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Second, I'm gonna share my screen. <clears throat> so let's get started. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to be here and have the opportunity to introduce you to the English degree programs at the Hope University. My name is Dmitro Fedorinenko, and I'm an associate professor with the Department of Aerospace Engineering. Today, together with Professor Watanabe from Global Learning Center, we're going to introduce you to the School of Engineering and, more specifically, to the International Mechanical and Aerospace Degree course. Above all, I would like to mention about our beautiful city, Sendai, which is located uh, where Tohoku University is located. The history of the city began in 1600, and over the centuries, Sendai has been the political and economical center of the Tohoku region. Tohoku is the north uh, east region of Japan. As you can see, Sendai is located not so far from Tokyo. It's only 300 kilometers, and it takes uh, about one hour and a half by train. Sendai is also known as a city of trees and as an academic city due to a great number of universities relative to population. Referring to Albert Einstein, uh, we could say Sendai is the most suitable city for academic research. The Hoku University was established in 1907 as Japan's third imperial university. Today, the university encompasses 10 faculties, 15 graduate schools, and has about 18,000 students. It should be noted that uh, the faculty student ratio of one to six is the minimum among research universities in Japan. Since its foundation, the university policies of research first, open door and practice oriented research have produced excellent graduates, generated significant research outcomes and contributed to society. Tohoku University boasts to be among three designated national universities in Japan selected by the government in 2017. Okay, as you can see in this slide, the Hoku University takes the high places in uh, national and world ranking list, both in research and education. More specifically, the Hoku University takes first place in Japan according to the world university ranking and our university also highly ranked in material science, physics and astronomy mechanical and aerospace engineering. Strong emphasis on quality of research has long been our tradition. The university is proud of its five Nobel Prize winners, among them Dr. Koichi Tanaka, who is a graduate of the School of Engineering, and he got the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2002 for developing a new method for molecular analysis. Nowadays, we're using widely optical fibers as a channel for communication that was proposed by the former president of the Hoku University, Professor Nishizawa. And uh, perhaps all of us uh, today use flash memory that uh, was invented by Professor Masuoka in 1980. School of Engineering has a lot of outstanding achievements in the field of material science. For example, Yagi Antenna was widely used in radar systems 
and the home television antenna. The new KSTL uh, was invented by Dr. Honda, and it was a really breakthrough in the field of permanent magnetic steel at the time. The new method of perpendicular magnetic recording suggested by Professor Iwasaki achieved great success for hard disk drives since 2005. Tohoku University is open to diverse talents from all over the world. Our university is an international hub where talented students can gather, learn, and create. Currently, around 2,200 international students are enrolled in study at Tohoku University from 90 countries, including uh, 32 students from India. Okay, university. In the next slide, you can see some information about undergraduate courses. The university offers three bachelor courses taught entirely in English, so Japanese English proficiency, proficiency is not required. So uh, these courses uh, are advanced molecular chemistry, mechanical and aerospace engineering, and applied marine biology. Next, I would like to present a short video about FGL undergraduate courses.
Okay, thank you for watching the video. The part undergraduated courses, the Hoku University also offers 23 master's and doctoral courses taught entirely in English. You can get more information on this website. For example, the School of Engineering offers two graduate programs, IMAG and RICTA. RICTA mainly is focused on robotics. So next, I would like to outline some important steps on how to apply to graduate courses. First, you need to get consent of acceptance from a prospective advisor. To do so, you need to find faculty members in the field of your interest. For example, at the very beginning, you could search by keywords, for example, for example research fields, you can refer to this web page, or alternatively, you could search by names of departments and schools. Please use this website. And finally, please also check application eligibility and general procedure following this web page. So, and you need to take an examination. Next, I would like to introduce you to the School of Engineering. The School of Engineering uh, located, is located in the Aobayama campus. Aobayama, camp, Aobayama literally means green leaves mountain. From this picture, you now can understand why it's called the green mountain. This is a very green area. School of Engineering is the largest school of our university, which has 23 degree programs and has over 5,000 students. Currently, around 500 international students are enrolled, creating a multicultural learning atmosphere. School of Engineering encompasses several departments such as uh, such as applied chemistry, material science, civil engineering, electric, electrical information and physics engineering, and finally mechanical and aerospace engineering, including international undergraduate and graduate courses. IMACU is an un international undergraduate course run by the Division of Mechanical Engineering. The division consists of more than 100 laboratories covering a wide range of engineering fields, such as mechanical system, fine mechanics, aerospace engineering, robotics, and biomedical engineering. Let's take a look at the IMAC U curriculum. Apart from liberal arts uh, and basic science courses, our students study a set of top-notch specific courses, and they are deeply involved in lab-based research from the second year. Moreover, our students can continue their education in master's and doctoral studies. In addition, uh, the Division of Mechanical Engineering has a career support system which helps international students develop their careers. Our high-level research activities have a strong connection to industry. Normally, the number of job offers from industry is over five times of the number of our job-seeking students. Our graduates are employed in leading Japanese companies such as Toyota, Denso, Nissan, Hitachi, and so on. And it should be also noted that uh, almost half of my Mac U graduates continue to IMAG to the graduate course. And uh, a large proportion of doctoral graduates work as uh, postdoctoral researchers in universities all over the world. So in the next slide, you can see IMAC contact information, including email address and several useful links uh, on the admission procedure, available scholarships and curriculum. You get can get more information by scanning this QR code. So you can also get more, inf more detailed information on IMAC U Labs by following this QR code on your left. Uh, you can access uh, you can watch, access and watch videos for each lab of IMACU course. 
All videos are in Japanese by default, but you can enable and display English subtitles as well. Next, I would like to present a short video about iMac research. The Tohoku University Division of Mechanical Engineering strives to realize a more comfortable and safe society. Students from all over the world are developing cutting-edge research with our internationally famous professors and their fellow students while receiving a high-level education in mechanical engineering, material engineering, space technology, robotics, and bioengineering. The Division of Mechanical Engineering covers a wide range of research, from the nano-level substance control to the development of space technology. Living organisms and medical treatment are also among our research targets. Simulation technology using multi-physics computational science is the fundamentals of material technology. With this knowledge, we can control friction phenomenon at the molecular level that affects the durability and dependability of machines. Nanoscale manufacturing not only maximizes the features of a material, but also gives the material a new function. The micro-nano devices created in our mechanical engineering division are generating the seeds for new industries related to medical treatment. We also pursue the realization of new, environmentally friendly energy systems. Fuel cells made from ceramics that operate at high temperatures are one key example. We study aerodynamics aiming for new frontiers in aerospace technology. We are developing technology for space exploration from the Mars spaceships to robotics for extreme and uncertain environments. We have already developed robots that have assisted in disaster-stricken areas. Mechanical engineering can advance the methods to realize comfortable lives. Here at the Division of Mechanical Engineering, you will find people you can share your dream with. I first came to Tohoku University after graduating as part of a one-year internship. And the lab environment here and my professors were pretty awesome. So I decided to stay for a while after that. And now I'm doing my PhD here. Tohoku University is one of the most famous universities in the world, especially in the field of engineering and uh, material science. One of the most famous writers, Lu Xin, in China, also graduated from Tohoku University. So it is a great pleasure for me to start here. I had always wanted to come to Japan, and Tohoku University offers a great program. It's an excellent combination between classes offered in English and the possibility to work in a laboratory. This laboratory, my laboratory, welcomed me like a family. After I got a scholarship from the Japanese government, I had to find an ideal laboratory here in Japan. I could find it here at Tohoku University, in where I had several opportunities as going to international conferences and belonging to a big project. This project is about molecular robotics. Okay, thank you for watching the video. I'm running out of time. So in the next slide, you can find a detailed step-by-step -step application guide to international programs offered by Tohoku University. You can scan this QR code to get more information. I would like to draw your attention to some important dates. The application submission period is planned for January 9th, 2024, and the application deadline is scheduled for January 17th. And uh, examination is one day in March. So next, the Hoku University has specific academic uh, requirements for each international course, such as English test course, standardized examination score. To get more, please scan this QR code. 
Education expenses consist of admission and tuition fees, average living cost in Sendai is less than a thousand US dollar monthly. As you can see, tuition fee at our university is much cheaper than, for example, in the US public universities. A variety of scholarship opportunities are offered to international students, including max scholarship, which cover both educational and living expenses, all international students are eligible to receive the president's special scholarship that can cover all education expenses. You can get more information on this website. Welcome to join us. Okay, thank you. That's it from my side. If you have any questions, I would be pleased to answer them. Thank you, Professor, for such an enlightening presentation. Uh, uh, let us look into the Q&A portal. So there's one question about the requirements of PhD program in biomedical engineering. Uh, so can you just briefly, uh, I think you have already covered that in your presentation, but can you just uh, highlight the few concepts, a few things? Professor Watanabe. Uh, so uh, to apply for the medical, regardless of the actually subject, you need to find a supervisor first. So please uh, visit our, you know, uh, university site uh, about, I will uh, share the URL for the information to professor's specialty and find that, you know, professor you would like to, you want to work with and then write a letter, email, to him or her, because the a PhD program is based on the research. Mm -hmm. So that yes. is very important in the first step. And then find the uh, next one is apply for the program, okay? Thank you, uh, Yumiko Sensei, thank you very much. So let's go to the next question. A student wants to know if IELTS score is compulsory to join the FGL course. Uh, what score you say? Uh, IELTS, IELTS score. Uh, I, IELTS, yes, yeah. it's compulsory. Okay, is there any alternate method to prove their uh, English proficiency? Uh, we accept the uh, TOEFL IBT okay. as well. Okay. Uh, basically, those two is the most popular one. Thank you, thank you, Professor. And there's another question about the aerospace program. So, how much ACT score is required? <laughs> of course, higher is better. <laughs> yeah, uh, we ask to submit a score on math and science. Okay, okay. Uh, full score, I believe, is 36. So close to 36 is more chance. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor. And about scholarships, so uh, is, are there any, uh, other than MEC scholarship, are there any university scholarships from Tohoku University? Uh, as uh, uh, Father Renenko says, uh, told, mm -hmm. we offered a unique fellowship uh, that mm -hmm. we call the President Fellowship Money. The total amount is equivalent to the tuition fee. And the admission fee was, is also waived once you got the, you know, uh, present fellowship money. Oh, yes, thank you, Professor. So all the other questions are uh, very simple. They can, you can usually find the answers to them by going to the university website. And I think uh, Yumiko Sensei and uh, Professor Dimitro has also shared the details in the chat box. So please refer to them. And if you have uh, any further questions, please post them in the Q&A portal. So uh, the panelists here will answer the questions. And thank you, uh, uh, Professor Dimitro and uh, Yumiko Sensei for joining us today and giving us uh, an immensely helpful presentation. So it will, I'm sure students have benefited a lot and are aspiring to study there. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for this great opportunity for us. Uh, thank you, Yumiko. Thank you. Uh, let us.
proceed to the next university. Can I have the agenda slide, please? Thank you. So now we have uh, Niigata University. Niigata University is located in the vibrant city of Niigata and is renowned for its faculty of science. So the university is committed to fostering a dynamic learning environment, encouraging innovation and conducting cutting edge research. So with the state of the art facilities and esteemed faculty members, Niigata University continues to attract aspiring scientists and researchers from around the world. Today, we have the privilege of being joined by Professor Satish Kumar, a distinguished faculty member from the Faculty of Science at Niigata University. He will provide us with an overview of the study and life uh, in the university. Uh, over to you, Professor. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. And uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to present about Niigata University. Uh, my name is Satish Kumar and I'm, uh, I'm uh, working in Niigata University as a professor in geology. Actually. So let me uh, share the uh, screen and... Okay, so let me first of all introduce myself. I, 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 uh, because everyone might be interested in knowing why, why I am here and I I, re, I actually uh, like uh, all of you. I was a, I, I studied in Kerala in India until my master course, and I joined a PhD uh, as a mixed scholar, getting a chance for, to get the mixed scholarship. And I did my PhD in Osaka City University in Japan, and then uh, move, uh, moved to JSPS postdoc fellowship, and then got a position in uh, as a assistant professor in uh, at Shizuoka University which is very near to Mount Fuji and then uh, about 10 years back uh, 10, 11, 11 and a half years back I moved here to Niigata University to join as a professor and now I have a, 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 a actually speaking I am more I am more in the administrative side that, rather than my doing uh, research so but still i uh, i do a lot of uh, research in geology as well okay so it's almost 30 years in japan so i i would uh, like to share my thoughts about uh, about uh, study and life in japan so that will be much more a little bit different from what uh, tokyo university and tokyo university have uh, taught you but but uh, let me introduce about my university first and my place where niigata is uh, niigata is situated it's in the japan sea side it is one of the 15th largest city in uh, city in japan and it's about 2 hour ride by uh, Shinkansen or the bullet, bullet train. So it's a nice place. Uh, it's uh, in the coastal area where we have a good uh, atmosphere and Niigata for living. And it's uh, it's not too too big. It's not too small. So it is good that we man we can manage uh, very easily. And the city is a uh, very nice place to live. So the about the facts about university, uh, uh, it is established as a full-fledged uh, university in 1949. Before that, it was a uh, higher education in institution, but not as a university. But uh, now we are going to celebrate 75th anniversary of uh, of uh, starting uh, uh, starting this university. So we have about uh, 12,000 students and. Uh, uh, mostly undergraduate, about 10,000 10, undergraduate students and about 2,000 postgraduate students and uh, including staff and uh, administrative staff, we have about 3,000 and uh, about 500 international students. And I will just show you a, a four minute video, which is uh, having, uh, unfortunately, I we do not have an English narration. So I will just reduce the volume so that it, it will not disturb you too much. Uh, Japanese narration, but we have a subtitle here. So please watch.
今日です旭町キャンパスは医学部、歯学部、2つの大学院のほかに医師学総合病院や脳研究所など優れた環境が整っており国立の総合大学らしい新潟大学ならではの学びを実現しています新潟大学は広大な越後平野に囲まれる恵まれた環境の中にあり日本海側の地域から対岸のアジア地域に展開する地の拠点として存在しています本学は自立と創生を全学の理念に掲げ優れた教育と研究さらに社会貢献を通じて地域のみならず世界の発展に着実に貢献してきましたこのように本州日本海側ラインの中心に位置する大規模総合大学として関東アジア地域を起点に世界の平和と発展に寄与することが全学の基本戦略の一つです多様な教育と研究の機会を得ることができる総合大学新潟大学において皆さんがタフでしなやかな人材として成長されることを私たちは全力で応援し支援します Okay, so, so that was a short video of, about our university. So I suppose、uh, you have got more, more in, most, most of the information about, the, about our、uh, institution, but I'll just、uh, pick up some of, the,、uh, some of them related to,、uh, related to my, my own faculty and、uh, explain a little bit more in detail. There, here, here you can see the、uh, world university ranking and where we are and、uh, compared to the Tokyo and、uh, Tohoku, we are, of course, we are、uh, below the level, but, but still、uh, it, we, we find ranking in,、uh, in QS as well as THC and so on. So,、uh, as, uh, as you might have heard from,、uh, from the explanation in the video, we have all, all we'd say we have a full fledged university, so every、uh, su subjects are taught in our university. And、uh, we have undergraduate、uh, courses in all these subjects. But unfortunately, I should say that I should uh, uh, say that it is,、uh, it, most of the courses are in, in Japanese. So we usually pro provide、uh, some more、uh, assistance to、uh, postgraduate students like masters and PhD in,、uh, for, for coming to our university. There are some, some courses which are taught in English, but, but we'll have to,、uh, you have, you'll have to. Contact our international office.、Uh, I will give you the information later on. So,、uh, uh, above that, we have、uh, five uh, in, uh, graduate schools where we have masters and post、uh, doctoral courses. And also, we, have, we are proud to have two、uh, specialized、uh, research institutes. One is、uh, Brain Research Institute, another one is a Research Institute for Natural Hazards and、uh, Disaster Recovery. And also, some specific research、uh, centers which are related to Asian.、Uh, the, What is a psychology center and a, a ecological、uh, research center, and as well as we have a medical uni、uh, university hospital and dental hospital as well. 
So it's a it's a it's a full fledged university. We have uh, uh, all facilities here, and I will come come to just uh, to show show what we have in the Faculty of Science. We are we are we um, in the inside the Faculty of Science. Also, we have all programs such as physics, ma mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, and geology, and environmental science. And and we have newly in introduced a field research uh, uh, program in. Uh, environmental science which is uh, actually it's completely done in uh, uh, english actually i'll come up to that a uh, little bit later on so just mathematics you have all all sort of uh, mathematics we have about uh, uh, 15 to 17 professors who are uh, working in mathematical uh, research and so and it's quite they have uh, done very good work as well and in physics here we have uh, the, uh, most of our uh, research is on uh, uh, especially on high energy physics and nuclear physics as well as condensed matter physics they are very strong in uh, physics uh, and uh, chemistry also we have uh, several faculties and we in fact we you might be those who are very 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 fond of chemistry they might be knowing about the 113th element nihonium there uh, that was uh, actually in uh, part of but invented in uh, in japan and that is uh, one of our professors was, is also part of it professor kudo and uh, goto they are shown here and for uh, geo, uh, in the biology also we have all um, all full, uh, fully uh, all all subjects start in biology uh, i'm not going to detail uh, in I, I, in fact i am a specialist in geology so i'll just a little bit more in detail we we do have a, a very strong field based geology uh, geology department and we teach we have a lot of foreign students as well because we do a lot of uh, sci scientific research in foreign uh, field areas like in uh, like in uh, for example in india also we have a lot of we have done quite a lot of uh, research as well as in antarctica and and also going to the um, uh, going to the mount, mountainous regions as well as uh, exploring in the sea uh, joining the drilling core projects so it's it's a uh, it's fun for uh, for us to do research in uh, over here and uh, we also have an environmental uh, science program where where we have environmental biology physical chemical environmental sciences and so on uh i'll skip and uh, just coming up to the coming to the new new program which we we uh, we got formally ex we got a, uh, a project from Mom Ministry of Education. It's on uh, human resource development in the pro program on field science research in the Indo-Pacific region, in which we actually connect with uh, five important institutions in India, uh, namely uh, IIT, IIT Roorkee, IIT Kanpur, and Indian Institute of Science, and Cochin University of Science and Technology, and Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. And uh, there are other institutions from uh, uh, Australia also, in which we actually uh, do a, a, a hybrid type of a program where you can uh, have uh, online lectures as well as uh, on-site like training of course we cannot uh, take a large number of on-site uh, students but still we uh, this is fully supported by the uh, ministry of science and technology so this uh, kind of programming i uh, would say encourages the students to come to niigata and see what what we are doing and then of course uh, once you get in get in here for a short time then we you can you know what is going on here and how how good it is a place to live and uh, learn uh, your uh, your subject of interest so then we can uh, ask or oh, you get in connection with us and then we'll try to get you uh, further opportunities that is the motivation for doing such kind of a project it will continue until 2006 to 26 so we also have as i told in the beginning we also have a research institute for uh, natural hazards as you know uh, japan is 
prone to a lot of uh, natural hazards and so we are all aware of the uh, aware of the risks involved and so we uh, want to educate the students and although also also the uh, society about the uh, risks involved and we uh, we should be aware of earthquakes we should be aware of volcanic eruptions and those kind of things those are those are all basically geology related and so we are we are a part of the, there is an institute for in in our university and we also collaborate with them and uh, for teaching student teaching the students as well as to getting them uh, learn how uh, how to manage uh, in living in a, such a place so and our one of the prestigious institution in our university is the Brain Research Institute, institute which is situated in the in another campus called Sahimachi Campus, and there uh, it, it is one of the first neuro, neurological research institute, and it, and they do uh, world class research in uh, brain, uh, brain, brain, uh, actually brain. Uh, related topics i'm i'm which i'm far away from the subject topic but but you can visit their website and see what is what is being done there so about the international students we in uh, as of uh, last november we have uh, 518 students in different academic fields of course we can see that science engineering and agriculture is the more, about half of them are in science engineering and ag agriculture and uh, and most of them are in doctoral course as well. You can see 170 uh, out of them, 177 are in doctoral course and 122 in masters, and rest of them in different subject field, uh, different uh, levels. Of course, from uh, in country wise, it is uh, mostly from China, but uh, still we have a few Indian students, and it is increasing. After, of course, after my arrival here, here as a professor, we have more connections with Indian universities, and more and more students are uh, coming. But last few years, it is because of the Corona and other things, we are we are having less uh, students. Of course, we also have a, you can you may you, you can see these kind of pictures from any any anywhere any from everywhere in the in every part of Japan and it is a part of the culture. So for pros, I'll just spend two three minutes for the pro, prospective international students who wish to come to Japan. So some information you can of course it's uh, those who like to uh, drop in drop in. A message to this uh, uh, you, you can just see how it how you can connect to us so you just visit our our website and just uh, there are there is a menu for study at Niigata University and you can uh, you can search and find study at uh, Niigata University and and there is a uh, there is information given for scholarships like uh, Japanese government, so that's a mixed scholarship, as well as like New York University scholarship. We have a uh, separate one, and you know, through in, in the uh, university recommendation, we also have uh, possibilities, and of course, through individual applications as well. So, uh, in uh, for example, uh, tuition fee exemption for 2021 academic year, you can see the receive application like this uh, for for our for our university and we accept all, almost i would say almost half of the uh, students foreign students get some or other exemptions uh, so we you are highly likely that you can uh, uh, pursue your studies with at a much lesser cost than any other country in the world and there are uh, how how this is done. The flow chart we we have provided clear flow chart for how to approach uh, uh, different uh, ways to find out uh, your possibilities. And uh, this I am not going into detail because my time is running uh, going to run out. So, you, but still you can just uh, send an in inquiry form to uh, to our international office and they will definitely respond. And you just specify whether you need to find a professor or a researcher who is in the specific field of uh, field which you are looking for. So uh, the brochures and videos for, for university is given in this site and so you can easily follow our uh, information. 
So compared to the Tokyo or a bigger city like Osaka or Tokyo, if you can, I, you can say that there is always a, a smaller city cost less than what you spend in other place. Of course, it is. This is uh, an average uh, expenses for uh, living in uh, in a place like Niigata. So it is. You can say approximately it is about uh, about some some something like this. So of course the uh, of course the level you live it is depending upon your needs as well. But that is uh, it's about it's about how you spend in uh, in data. So so that's it. I, I think my uh, time is almost getting uh, over. So we look forward to welcoming you in Niigata University. Please uh, drop in the uh, inquiry form from uh, when you check in our website and you and on the last in, in my in my last slide uh, uh, slide I, I would like to show you that Niigata is a wonderful place where you can enjoy the change of seasons you of course in Japan many most of the places you can get you, know, you can see this kind of things but in in Niigata you, you we also have good amount of snow in the winter so it is it's a place where you can enjoy the four full four seasons in okay thank you that's it oh, thank you professor for sharing a very interesting presentation along with the video of the university life in the uh, in nikata so uh, we can proceed with the q and a session uh, are there undergraduate programs in english in the nikata university uh unfortunately i i would say perfectly we are not uh, we are still trying to do it but but not perfect enough uh, i i i would say like what uh, i have seen just now in tokyo or in tohoku we do not have that kind of a program but but uh, those who are interested in please drop in a message and we will see what is the subject they they like to do uh, for example in science it might be possible but not in some some other uh, subjects where there are less foreign faculties are there. So, okay. okay. Uh, so, a student wants to know the similar question in mathematics course. So, in mathematics, do you think we can get it in English or it is in Japanese? Actually, our mathematics department, we have uh, foreign students from, uh, for example, from Taiwan and from uh, East, mostly from East, uh, for example, Malaysia or Philippines and uh, those places. They, we have undergraduate foreign students. So mathematics, as you know, we do you mostly we don't do not need that language that much. So and there are professors. Uh, there's a professor from well, from a foreign faculty is also there in the mathematics so it's possible okay thank you professor Thanks. and uh, usually in india if a student takes uh, the subjects of biology physics and uh, chemistry they can go into biomedical engineering as well so is it the same case in nikata university if a student doesn't have maths can he still take the biomedical engineering Yes, I, I I suppose so because I am not a, an expert in that field. But uh, that depends on what is uh, what is uh, in at least in biology within the faculty of science it is possible because we we do not uh, require the mathematics even for our undergraduate uh, entrance exam for Japanese students also we we do not prefer, we do not ask the biology biology okay. uh, faculty doesn't ask for uh, mathematics so it's possible. Okay. Yes, thank you, Professor. And I think students who are, are interested in, in pursuing research like master's or doctoral programs in geology, they can definitely contact you. We can see your expertise in the geology. Yeah. So thank you for once thank again you. joining us today. Yeah, and thank you very time. much. Thank you very much. It was it was it's really a nice and a very uh, entertaining time to interact with people from uh, students from India. I usually sometimes join this uh, in India fair in, in, in India uh, from oh. your uh, in the Tokyo University fair itself. So so because of the corona, it was not possible these few years. So maybe next time. Yes, yes, definitely, thank Professor. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for thank joining you. us. Thank you. Uh, we'll proceed with the next university now. Can I have the agenda slide, please? Uh, so, like I said before, uh, the University of Tokyo is one of the top universities in Japan. And like a cherry on the cake, we have uh, we have another presentation from the University of Tokyo by Ms. Midori Arakawa. I'm very delighted to introduce her as a project specialist from the student mobility team 
who will enlighten us about the Global Education Center and also for students who are interested in short-term programs at the University of Tokyo. Please stay tuned to the presentation because all the details will be covered in this. Uh, I invite Ms. Midori uh, to give the next presentation. Okay, uh, so can you hear me okay? Yes, 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 right. we can hear you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon and good evening, everyone uh, from Tokyo, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Midori Arakawa, a project specialist from the International Education Promotion Group here at the University of Tokyo. Uh, today, I'm delighted to introduce GLOBE, Center for Global Education and Short-Term Programs Available for Non-U Tokyo Students. So before we move on, okay. uh, before we move on, I'd like to introduce our new center, Globe. Uh, in April, in April of this year, 2023, the University of Tokyo established a new center for global education center. Uh, the center functions as a comprehensive international education platform for the entire university, which aims to foster global citizens who contribute to the world. Um, the center, known as GLOBE, uh, serves as an educational hub for all U Tokyo students as well as inbound students. Um, it takes on to the it, it takes on the role of a global concierge, uh, offering various international programs, programs and support. Uh, GLOBE offers a wide range of international education uh, educational content, and one notable feature is global liberal arts courses and interactive English medium classes that. Uh, that are available to all students and exchange students. These courses focus on the, uh, the themes of the SDGs uh, or sustainable development goals and urge students to think about uh, some of the most urgent uh, issues such as you know, uh, the war, environmental destruction, poverty, and human rights violations and so on. So we provide an educational space for students to, re to reflect on these uh, global challenges in an um, interactive settings. So uh, among the various programs that we offer, we will pick two, program two programs today. Uh, the first one is GUC, Global Unit Courses. So about uh, Utoku GUC. Uh, GUC is a series of English taught and short-term intensive courses, which was launched in the summer of 2021. Uh, that's only two years ago. Uh, and in the past two years, all the courses were offered through online uh, because of the pandemic, unfortunately. But um, finally, this summer, we are excited to offer these courses in person. So uh, Utokyo GUC is one of the best ways to experience Utokyo classes uh, while belonging to your home university. So uh, who's eligible to take these courses? Um, so to be eligible to participate in the program, applicants must be currently enrolled in the university as a full-time student. Uh, both undergraduate or uh, either, sorry, either undergraduate school uh, or graduate school. And also regular students enrolled at the University of Tokyo may also participate in the program, uh, which means you, have an, uh, you also have a chance to meet our local students through the program. Language uh, requirement. Uh, the courses uh, will be taught in English. Uh, so good news is Japanese language is not required unless you are taking Japanese courses. Uh, although no certificate of English language proficiency is required, students must possess sufficient language proficiency uh, to complete university level courses. Um, the expected uh, minimum English level is that of uh, TOEFL 90 or IELTS 6.5. Uh, credits. Uh, students will be given global units, uh, sorry, global units uh, based on their performance and the number of class hours. 
Uh, upon successful completion, a global unit certificate will be issued by the U Tokyo. And this may, um, this may be used to uh, calculate credits uh, to, to transfer to their home, uh, home institution. Uh, generally, the, we guide students, we ask students to check and confirm with their home university regarding cre credit transfers. And also, as you see in the pictures here, uh, students and ambassadors uh, will, be, uh, will be able to help you as well. So during the program, um, students and ambassadors, ambassadors formed by the U Tokyo students open, open the window uh, for GUC uh, students specifically. Uh, so you may ask any questions regarding the courses or you know, what it's like to live in Japan or sightseeing trips, uh, tips uh, you know, around Tokyo or entire Japan or you know, simply just stop by to um, have a conversation or chat with them and get to know each other. So the GUC allows uh, you to interact with local U Tokyo students as well. So the next one, Let's see, oops, sorry. So the schedule um, program for 2023 has already started actually uh, last week. So you will be um, you'll be able to apply for the next year in 2024. Uh, but just to give you an idea, here are the key uh, key timeframes from the program this year. Um, application period run from February to mid March, uh, which is about six weeks, and then applicants will receive screening results in mid mid April. Then the courses will run uh, from mid June, mid June to July, and the program uh, period is divided into three terms. So the schedule uh, for the next year will be announced in due course and will be available on our website. Uh, but you may expect similar schedule for the next one as well. Next, uh, course hours and fees. In order to make the uh, courses available, uh, accessible for students, uh, we have kept the program fees to a minimum. Uh, the cost de depends on the format and the number of units. So please calculate before applying. Uh, but just to give you an, uh, a better understanding, 100 yen is equivalent to 0 0.7 US dollars. So in person, one global unit of 150, 150,000 Japanese yen is equivalent to 100, uh, sorry, 1,000 US dollars in the current exchange rate. Next day are some examples of the courses. So GUC offers a, a, range, a wide range of courses from the humanities to social science to STEM subjects. And one of the special features of this program is that all the courses uh, are taught, uh, as I said, um, uh, sorry, all the courses are taught by uh, full-time faculty members of the university. And this summer, 12 main courses are offered uh, through GUC. And in addition to the uh, 12, 12 main courses, um, as I mentioned earlier, GUC also offers uh, Japanese language courses online. Uh, during the term one and term two. So, uh, you know, thanks to the popular uh, culture, Japanese language is becoming more popular uh, among the international students. So um, please consider uh, that taking Japanese classes as well. Um, if you are interested in our culture or language, so, uh, I recommend that you join our language courses of U Tokyo to UC. But please note that um, the Japanese language courses must be taken together with at least one of the uh, one of the main courses. So uh, I'm showing some uh, some of the courses uh, course titles here. So you know, hopefully some of the topics would uh, catch your eyes. So AI for understanding human intelligence, early language acquisition, sustainability, social justice and resource management, uh, survival Japanese. Capitalism and census, uh, contemporary Japanese politics, dilemmas of development in Asia, group theory and its applications, sustainable urban management, AI and social justice, uh, survival Japanese, term three, uh, law in translation, uh, law in translational East Asia, and science of light.
So um, yes, yeah, students may take any number, any numbers of uh, courses from any term as long as there are no time conflicts. And please note that those attending uh, those attending the program in person may select online courses as well. And please check the timetable from the program website specific uh, uh, for specific time periods when the courses are taught. So that's about it for the. Um, the first one, GUC. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, make an inquiry directly to the um, email uh, emails listed here. Right, so next one, I'd like to introduce the Amgen Scholars Program here at the University of Tokyo. Amgen, uh, as you may know, uh, Amgen Foundation is fully backed, by, uh, backed up by Amgen, one of the uh, uh, world's leading biotechnology company based in the US. And Amgen Foundation launched a program which provides hundreds of undergraduate students each year with the opportunities to um, undertake scientific research projects at many of the world's leading uh, institutions. It was launched in the uh, in two, two, 2006 in the United, United States uh, two, 2008 in Europe and 2015 in Japan and at the University uh, of Tokyo and Kyoto University, uh, Amgen Scholars has expanded expanded uh, to additional world-class institutions in the US, Canada, Europe, Australia and Asia. Right, so, oops, sorry, this one. So what's uh, what's U Tokyo, uh, you know, uh, Amgen Scholars Program? So basically, it's uh, in summary, uh, it's an eight-week laboratory, laborat laboratory internship opportunity for undergraduate students who are seeking for a career as scientists in the field of, field of bioscience, biotechnology, or drug discovery. Uh, you would get hands-on love experiences in uh, Graduate School of Medicine engineering, science, agricultural and life sciences, pharmaceutical sciences, and Institute of uh, Industrial uh, Science. So it also offers financial, financial support, which is very important, uh, to cover your accommodation during the program, as well as travel costs, so you can fully focus on your research. And Without mentioning, you would get international experiences and networking opportunities with peer scholars. So the program consists with research opportunities in a U Tokyo lab, a study visit, and excursions outside of campus, and final presentation. And to wrap up the program, a symposium will be held uh, with other Amgen scholars in Tokyo or Kyoto. Right, so eligibility, who is uh, who is this for? Um, here are the requirements. Uh, applicants must be undergraduate students who are enrolled in uh, colleges or universities uh, that's a, that award a bachelor's degree or equivalent. At the minimum, uh, have you have completed their first year uh, of undergraduate study at the at the time of the summer program begins, and are not graduating before the summer program begins, and after the summer program ends, uh, will res uh, after the after the summer program ends, uh, will resume undergraduate studies for at least one semester or one quarter. And you took Amgen Scholars applicants must also have a strong record of academic performance and have good working knowledge of English demonstrated by TOEFL, IELTS, Cambridge, English uh, FCE, or TOEIC. Um, to give you an idea, uh, by uh, TOEFL IBT score of 72 or IELTS overall band score of 5.5 is the minimal requirement in the English proficiency. Also, you have to have an uh, interest in pursuing a uh, PhD. Right, so the key dates and timeframes, uh, application period. Uh, this is an example from this year or this, um, this year. Uh, so application per period ran from November last year to February this year. 
and applicants notified of decision, the result was available in late March. So, and the participants, you know, those uh, who were selected uh, must arrive in Tokyo by June 5th. And Yuto Kamjin Scholars Program started on June 5th, uh, June 6th, and it ends on the uh, August 5th. So this year, actually, um, right now, uh, we're hosting 39 Amgen scholars from around the world. Uh, they're selected from over 800 applicants from universities around the world uh, gathered here at the University of Tokyo. And um, that's a nice picture, I like it. Uh, yesterday, they have just gone to catch a kabuki play, a classical form of Japanese theater mixing dramatic uh, performance with traditional dance. And we also plan to visit a seminar house by Lake Yamanaka, which is by the Mount Fuji for two nights and have the midterm presentation. So it's a study visit combined with the presentation. So, and at the end of the month, uh, we have a final presentation. Then we're, uh, we're moving on to Singapore for Asia Symposium. Uh, but from next year, moving forward, the symposium, uh, symposium is expected to be held, as, as, as I said earlier, either in Tokyo or Kyoto. Right, so finally, I'd like to introduce one of the initiatives uh, we're currently focusing on. Uh, we are actively engaging fostering a new kind of international exchanges in Japan. Uh, our particular uh, emphasis is strengthening uh, ties, uh, sorry, uh, our particular emphasis is strengthening ties with regions uh, in the global south. And we want to provide more opportunities for our students to go, such, uh, go to such destinations while also welcoming students from uh, these places. In particular, uh, we hope to offer students affected by challenging, uh, challenging, challenging economic and political uh, conditions uh, a chance to study with us. That is enable, uh, enabling them to make a breakthrough uh, from a better, for a better career. For example, uh, we're currently starting a program with the uh, Asian, uh, Asian University for Women, uh, shortened for AUW in Chittagong, Bangladesh, uh, AUW attracts talented female students from uh, around the world, uh, many, of, uh, and many of whom are first generation or come from zones of political and military conflicts. Uh, through online and in-person programs, the AU, AWU and, sorry, AUW and New Tokyo students have been learning together and establishing personal relationships. Uh, through this kind of international exchanges, our goal is to provide our students and those at the uh, those at other institutions with opportunities for gaining a truly uh, global outlook that enables them to contribute to the well-being of uh, of all in 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 this world. Right, uh, that's it for the from the globe. Uh, here, uh, actually, here are some uh, other pro summer programs offered by our graduate schools. Uh, so science, uh, in, this, in the field of science, UTRIP, uh, they have uh, this uh, summer research program uh, targeted at the undergraduate students. And uh, UTSIP, uh, University of Tokyo Summer Internship Program in Kashiwa, it's a six-week research internship program for undergraduate students. And also uh, ESEP uh, is a, a research program in the field of engineering, and it's an opportunity for undergraduate, graduate, undergraduate and graduate students to participate in scientific um, research project, uh, projects, laboratories of the UTOKYO. And to be uh, specifically for India, uh, students from India, uh, we have a uh, partner uh, universities as well. And uh, this is the schedule from this year. It's a nine, uh, nine week intensive program. Right, so um, I think I'm about the right time. Uh, that's it from, the, uh, from myself. Uh, and uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, we will be posting the links uh, of the relevant pages uh, that I have just explained. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, shoot an email 
And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you at the, here at the University of Tokyo. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you, Ms. Mugavi, for a wonderful presentation. <laughs> Uh, and these uh, these points have not yet been covered till now in the webinar series, and I'm glad that students got to know about them. Uh, thank you for covering them, and uh, let's look into the Q and A portal. Uh, most of the questions have already been answered. Uh, so, other than Amgen Scholarship Program, uh, can are there any other scholarships for the students to come here on short term programs? Right. So, uh, uh, other pro short term programs. So, as I mentioned in uh, the, the GUC, it's GUC. one of them. You know, you get to take a uh, global unit uh, global unit courses, and then you get credits. And then, I mean, of course, you have to double check with your um, host university whether the transfer is possible or not. You know, this is very important since we understand. And also, Amgen, as I said, and also. The um yeah the the three uh summer programs that that I mentioned uh, in the last yes one. yes so are scholarships provided for all of these programs or it is mostly Scholar student funded oh no so just to be clear GUC is uh it there is no scholarship available unfortunately uh, mm -hmm. so you would be uh, paying out of your pocket and uh, Amgen is uh, fully uh, covered and uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, if a student takes either GUC or if they come through Amgen or others short term program, so the accommodation and everything will be taken care of by the university. Right. For the GUC, we do not have the um, accommodation available. So you would have to uh, look for an accommodation by yourself. Uh, but mm -hmm. there are uh, tons of hotels and then, uh, you know, affordable places to stay around the campus as well. So um, yeah, you can you have to look for uh, uh, your your own accommodation. But for the uh, Amgen scholars, um, it's uh, you know as I I mentioned earlier, it's it's covered in the program as a stipend, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, thank you. So one last question: uh, Do you have any suggestions or tips for the students to get accepted into the Amgen scholars program? Oh, sorry, come again, please. <laughs> uh, do you have any tips or suggestions for the students to get selected into the Amgen's program? Hmm. You just study hard. <laughs> 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 yeah, as I said, you know, it's very competitive, especially the Amgen. It's, uh, you know, we, we receive hundreds of applications every year. It's it's a very very popular program. You know, you get to, you know, they would pay for your flights, and then you get to stay uh, around the campus. You know, uh, it's it's also covered, and yeah, it, it's a wonderful program. It's very attractive. So um, yes, mm -hmm. yes, thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, just to uh, add some comments about the accommodation for GUC. Yes. Um, so you, we can also, the university can also make suggestions uh, if you uh, have any questions. So um, again, if you have any questions around the uh, yeah, courses, accommodation, just ask, ask us, please. Yes. Uh, thank you for joining us today and for giving a very uh, a comprehensive presentation. And uh, we can move on to the next presentation. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, can I have the agenda slide, please? So uh, we are almost at the end of the presentation, end of the webinar. So uh, lastly, we have uh, Ms. Akshi Varma, who, is, who has studied in Japan and is currently working in Japan. She is here to provide us an overview of studying in Japan based on her personal experience. So I invite Ms. Sakshi Varma to give, start her presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Vaishnavi. Uh, Please kindly allow me to share my screen. Oh. So is it visible? Yes. Yeah. Okay, is it I lagging? I, I hope my screen not is lagging, right? not lagging, right? Yes, now it's perfect. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for patiently waiting until the last set of presentation. And uh, today, um, uh, me, I'm Sakshi. Uh, this is Sakshi, and I'm going to uh, uh, take you to my experience and walk you through my experience of uh, st uh, as a student in Japan. So let's move on. So first, uh, I'll start with my introduction. Uh, I was born and raised in New Delhi. Uh, uh, like a uh, few years ago, I was on the other side of the webinar. So I was a student myself. I was a potential student who wanted to go for the higher studies. And I was confused at that time. But then uh, Japan happened to me and um, I started participating in various events and uh, like related to Japan, the cultural uh, started to take interest in the cultural uh, events of uh, of Japan and then that's how I got to know about Japan Foundation so it's basically um, supported by the embassy of Japan in India and I studied there as a student and I also worked there as a PR coordinator so after that uh, I w started working as um, as an assistant manager uh, for Ritsumeka Asia Pacific University so I had to travel a lot in India for promotion of Ritsumeka Nipu uh, and then uh, I happened to come in, uh, to Japan for my training and and I met some Indian students and I got to know about their experiences and that kind of stuff me get that kind of give me that inspiration to pursue my higher studies in Japan and I I pursued my MBA from Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific University and I graduated in 2022. Uh, currently, I am working as a PR consultant for, for a European company uh, in Tokyo and I support the PR for Japanese. Why did I choose Japan? Uh, of course, first as a girl, of course, uh, I understand that safety is really important. So definitely uh, my first um, uh, in terms of living, I the thing is, um, we do like, as a student, we are really uh, keen, we really keen to know that, you know, uh, how about the living? What about the tuition cost? And what about the accommodation? So uh, please do, uh, please be assured that living in Japan is much more e uh, cheaper than living in other part of the world uh, apart uh, from our home countries. So uh, the reason because as a student, you could get uh, avail a lot of scholarships. I was never uh, to share my personal experience. I was never a government uh, funded uh, student. I basically I enrolled myself into the university and I upload uh, I, and I applied for the post enrollment scholarship. So uh, that kind of helped me to, uh, and, you know, reduced my burden to study uh, uh, can continue my master's program. Second, uh, third is about the health policies. So uh, like if you're in Japan, 70% uh, of your cost will be covered by the Japanese government. So you need to pay 30%. And if you are a scholarship uh, student, for example, if you are funded by say some uh, government uh, uh, like uh, company, so you will be, yeah, you're that, that 30 percent is all so covered by them so you don't need to worry about that however in government fourth is of the public transport i used to be a student uh, so i used to live in the very remote part of japan so however the public transport was very very convenient uh, there's a great connectivity of uh, trains and buses so you don't really need to worry on that part last is for the job opportunities so the job opportunities for foreign national is um, increasing like due to the labor shortage so japan is opening uh, and, and also open for all the foreigners so uh, don't worry about that um, so there are plenty of job opportunities if you know what you want uh, so yeah that's about it the next moving on, uh, I studied from Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific University. It is one of the multicultural and the diverse universities in Japan. Uh, it, uh, since I was a, a master student, I was a management student. Uh, I had to basically uh, connect with lots of uh, international students as well as professors. So I was very keen on building my grade, my network with my seniors as well as my professors. Uh, I also participated in various uh, or, uh, like programs and workshops. For example, uh, as a student, I uh, got to 
you know, create lots of uh, Japanese, like lots of like, it's, it's a bell with bamboo. So, you know, there are uh, university supported workshops, which they help you to as, a, as an extracurricular activity. Then uh, various scholarships, of course, uh, at Ritsume Khan, like I said, I was never a government uh, funded uh, scholarship uh, student i was a po i received a public scholarship uh, so that is there in apu uh, last is that i used to work a lot of uh, like as a part time jobs i used to do a lot of part time jobs on campus so i was assisting my professors on campus with their lectures preparing materials and then i used to teach english to japanese students so uh, depends upon you what kind of opportunity there are plenty of opportunities so uh, you do get to work on campus and people also prefer participating off campus uh, for part-time jobs so you don't have to worry about that uh, moving on, since uh, as, a, as a management stu uh, student, I had to participate in lots of case competitions. So uh, there were I used to compete with various universities. Uh, so uh, we had we were given the case um, a topic and we had to present with a solution. So that was on the spot. So that kind of uh, opened up a lot of opportunities for me as a student. I learned and I worked uh, with my uh, the other international students and got to know the importance of teamwork so that was a learning for me um the third is uh, about the rest i talked about part-time jobs so i don't won't won't talk about that then third is about the resident assistant uh so the thing is i personally like to communicate a lot uh i like to create my network so i was also the resident assistant of my dormitory so um this is a like for example if we, i feel like you know helping students or helping uh my uh, my uh, resident uh on my dormitory so there were lots of queries with them so i used to support them and uh, that and then fourth is about the admissions office so like this that the things which i am doing right now i also used to do the same with my university so uh, for the students who wanted to pursue their higher studies in japan uh, i used to help them through the admissions office and uh, like having the webinars or you know talking to them face to face and there were tons of opportunities and many more activities which i used to do as a student so uh, life after uh, APU, uh, I like I said, I graduated in 2022. So before graduating, uh, there's a one thing about Japan is that you need to basically start looking for jobs well in advance. So I was aware of that. So I started looking uh, jobs for like six months before. So I participated in career fairs and seminars. So um, there are plenty of companies uh, which come on the which participates in these kind of uh, seminars and you go you talk to them you hand your your cv and try to uh, avail the uh, interview opportunity you you if you're lucky they can interview you on the same day and you can you know present yourself uh, apart from that uh, i would also suggest uh, you know you can go through the recruitment website uh, then th there are plenty of websites like dijob.com and world gaijin port uh if you need to find a job which uh, which which is you know related to your field and where you want to explore so you could uh, google these uh, websites and you could find the jobs easily um thing uh, but be sure to participate on career fairs and seminars because usually uh, universities i'm talking about for the master student not the uh, it's very it differs like for bachelor students there is a placement opportunity from the campus but for masters and phd students we need to find job on our own so please for these career fairs and these recruitment websites so yeah Next, uh, regarding the mar job markets in Japan, like I said, there's a shortage of labor uh, in Japan. So, uh, if, uh, as well as the age due to age aging population, Japan needs people to work for them. So, uh, so it's a very potential market opportunity here uh, for working. Uh, uh, the thing is, at university level, you don't really need to speak Japanese. However, a little basic the knowledge of Japanese is, is really important. Uh, if you want to look for jobs, you need to have a good uh, command over the language. So I would suggest you to please start learning Japanese if you're really interested in pursuing your higher studies in Japan. 
try to uh, participate in events or workshops and try to participate in these kind of webinars and gain the information as much as possible try to communicate with japanese make japanese friends talk to them work on the communication skills uh, and then there the thing you also think is uh, in japan I, since i'm working now so i have like seen this um, by myself that Japanese people don't really uh, appreciate you working over time. So no, they don't really appreciate that. So please be uh, sh sure that you complete, if you're completing your work on time, uh, it's good. You can leave. However, if you, you know, so you need to maintain your work-life balance. It's very much important. So please be, try to maintain the work-life balance. Don't work too hard uh, that, that you don't really require that. So that's there. And um, like I said, there are various uh, foreign friendly companies. So if you're not, you know, confident enough in speaking Japanese, you can also apply uh, to the multinational companies as a consultant or as a researcher or um, or as a you know as a marketing researcher or as a marketing consultant so there are plenty of job opportunities for foreigners and well as well so uh, that's it uh, we wait you japan awaits for you and see you soon in japan somewhere thank you so much Thank you, Sakshi san, for giving us uh, an overview of studying and also working in Japan. There are usually many questions about job opportunities in Japan, and I think that your presentation has uh, has covered all those questions. Uh, this brings us to the end of the webinar. So uh, we sincerely appreciate your attention throughout this session, and we hope that the information shared by the universities and uh, others have provided you with a comprehensive overview of the application process in various universities. And for further information about additional universities and upcoming webinars, we will uh, share the QR code in, in some time. So please scan the QR code and uh, stay registered to us. And thank you once again for joining us today. We express our heartfelt gratitude for your participation and attendance. Uh, have a wonderful day ahead.